boosting. It's the multi-million dollar industry that sometimes verges into grey market yep. that we all see but few understand. So, what exactly is boosting? Wow, boosting exposed. This is a video I've wanted to watch for quite a while. I want to watch it because boosting in WoW has been a cock in the ass for a long time. And the problem is that it just keeps getting bigger. It becomes more optimized, soulless, more transactional. It's not good. So we're going to look into this and see what's going on. What exactly is boosting? Is it a valuable activity born of natural player interaction in an MMO, or- Yeah, I think it is. I think the problem with boosting is the fucking WoW token. I think boosting's totally fine if people are earning the gold. I like the idea and the RP of a big fat fucking goblin like Gallywix being chauffeured around by raiders because he overpaid them. I think that's, that's, fuck, that's RP right there. That's MMO. But the problem is that it's not Gallywix. It's David the account that works in accounting who's got an extra $20,000 every year and he keeps buying mythic mounts with real money. It's David doing this shit wrong. It's not Gallywix, it's David. David from accounting. That's my that's that's my uh my general opinion about boosting is that if you earn the gold it's fine. If you buy the gold, it's not. And if you can buy the gold in the game, you're going to buy the gold in the game. Is Why do you care what those people do with their money? Because it creates an economy for something that devalues the accomplishments of legitimate players through the use of real money. It's an MMO. I do not buy into the idea that an MMO, it doesn't matter what other players do in the MMO. I think that it does matter what other players do. I think that having something special makes people feel special. And if you can buy that something special, then it means it's not special. It does matter. It might not matter to you, but it very fucking obviously matters and is core to human psychology because it doesn't matter if it's employee of the month, a gold star for a test, a Lamborghini because you make a lot of money. It doesn't matter what it is, but there is manifestations of having something and feeling special and it wouldn't be special if everybody had it in every walk of life. Some think a pay to win plague that is ruining WoW's endgame in ways that we cannot even imagine. Yep. True. Well, the answer really is a bit of both. But how does it actually happen and why? To find this out, okay. we spoke to figures in the boosting community. Thank you. Some for, some against, even including pretty high up members. Today, we bring boosting to light. We to We're starting himself. by talking about how it works and the actual business behind it, okay. as well as Blizzard's, frankly, shocking management of issues such as RMT. Really? Is it really shocking? To who? Who's shocked? Video's kind of loud. Okay. To the point where even boosters are quite frustrated at them. This video is only part one. Soon, we will have part oh two, my God. focused on the design problems that have it's caused now, boosting right. to be a big problem, and the in-game implications that we are all seeing. Yeah. In many cases, we were quite frankly astounded by the professionalism and the incredible setup of these boosting communities. Well, this is the same thing whenever I used to do boosting back in Cataclysm. Like, you want to treat people right, you want to have everything go the right way, because it's a, uh, it's usually a peer-to-peer -peer referral business. Like, yeah, you're making advertisements out there and, you know, sending it out there. But the way you really get a lot of your money is whenever you do a sale for somebody and they're happy and they tell their friend. Or you do a sale for somebody and they're happy and they come back for another sale. That's what the majority of it is. It's the essence of the 80-20 rule where you get 80% of your business from 20% of your customers. It manifests itself in all kinds of different ways, but especially whenever you're making sales, it's especially true. Uh, and also whenever you have whenever you're making sales and doing things, this is the same thing. Like if you're doing buying and selling things illegally in, in, in real life it becomes much more important to have those positive interactions because you don't have you you don't have the opportunity to rely on a governing apparatus to to make things fair 
So you have to rely on trust. You have to rely on goodwill. Much more, actually, whenever you're dealing things like that. You know, like if you get scammed on a deal and it's an illegal deal, you're not going to go to the cops. You've got to work this out. And if you want others to feel like that about you, yeah. you're going to need a so great website with, to with today's sponsor, Squarespace.com forward slash Bellular Gaming, where though, you'll get a free trial and code Bellular Gaming yeah, will get you 10% off your first purchase. 100%. Just use that link down below. Yep. Now it's real simple. Squarespace are the fastest and easiest way for you to get a great looking site built quickly. Wow. I mean, I threw together this showcase site in about 40 minutes, Amazing. as you've heard, chilled you out, that? reclining with my iPad on the sofa. Imagine that. And it barely took any time to even Isn't add e-commerce to it. Incredible. Their award-winning templates are simply awesome. They wow. just let you hit the ground running with something that looks great. And that's Isn't brilliant that for somebody like me who's not a designer. But of course, you've got all wow. that room to customize later. Now you your site is what that? people see of you online, so if you want your portfolio to stand out, then a gorgeous, clean, and content first site is what you need. Of course, That's though, impressive. there is far more. Do you want is, a there site really, there for is. Oh my god, business? I can't believe it. Maybe a personal site. Wow. Maybe you're doing some e-commerce. They've it's even started a new memberships feature as well, if you want to try that. Wow. They've got the excellent site builder, easy to use tools, incredible templates. But wait, it's there's all more. all you need to get started. So start your free trial at squarespace.com forward slash Bellier Gaming and use that code Bellier Gaming to get 10% off your first purchase. Wow. Thanks to Squarespace for Isn't supporting this uh, big old... I love why you got... I love how y'all complain. There are some people complain about it, like they're mad. Wait, this guy makes a 37-minute video. It's edited, uh, scripted out and fucking everything and you're gonna get your dick in a knot because you have to sit through a one minute ad a 60 second fucking promotion who gives a fuck yeah i'm happy you got paid yeah there it is because he's greedy oh i'm sure you're not i'm sure you're not at all yeah you're definitely not fun investigation and let's get into it okay so why would people go. boost World of Warcraft has, for years, been built around extrinsic rewards and material goals first. Rewards carry prestige among the community, which was always a testament to how World of Warcraft worked excellently as a virtual world. Yeah. But once the desire for reward outweighs the desire to do the content, there will be a market for those who want the reward without the work. I can't think there of anybody are like always that. Always a few stories to tell in a market. The buyer in this case is perhaps somebody who wants Keystone Master, who wants Curve, yeah. or a stack of loot without as much effort. Imagine then, that. There's the seller, someone who will put that effort in on the buyer's behalf, but they of course need their own rewards. Yeah, they gotta get something. That will out be of the it. buyer's gold. Gold for raid consumables, for legendaries, for gold sinks like the black market auction house. Yep. And maybe even some gold to sell on the side for a bit of real money. Imagine that. There's more to the motives and the market. A lot more. And that's how we get to the multi-million dollar situation. But to understand that, you'll first need to actually understand what it's like on the inside. All right, let's see. So the, the quickest way to explain yeah, it is sure. like this. When you've got buyers and sellers they need to be matched up with each other. So this has made boosting communities like Hukan, Starlight, and yep. Oblivion crop up to do just that. Think yeah, about- Yeah, these communities basically, uh, it's like imagine each one is run by a uh, goblin trade prince or a uh, conglomerate of uh, goblin trade princes that basically connect by, they connect David's with Billy's, Billy's that plays the game uh, 47 hours a day, and he can do Mythic Sylvanas with his eyes closed. Well, it, it gets Billy to talk to David, and then David gives Billy money, and then Billy kills the boss for David. It, it's that easy. Uh, so this is effectively what these uh, what these things do. How Uber works. All you have to do is tell yeah. the app where you want to go give them some money, yeah. and they will handle the rest they using the available fee. drivers in their pool. 
That essentially is what boosting is like now. You send a request through to the community via yep. an advertiser on Discord or in-game. That advertiser then logs your request and a call is put out for boosters. Yep. Boosters respond to that call and before long, there you go. You have a group set up. You can hop onto a Discord channel to talk about the specifics and at the end, you can actually review your boosters based on your experience. You pay the gold to the advertiser who hands it yep. over to the boosting community. The boosting community easy. then tracks everybody's activity via Discord bots and spreadsheets. And and to be honest, like something like this, it's not that hard to do. Like everybody has like they're like, oh man, this is so hard. I can't figure it out. Uh, it's not hard to do. Like you just have an Excel. Uh, you have an Excel spreadsheet. You put everybody's fucking name in the Excel spreadsheet, and you just calculate it out. Like it, it's. It's just, it's literally below accounting one. It's not a big deal. Uh, I, I used to kind of do a little bit of this because I, I tried to do like my own little miniature boosting community in Keltazod where I would find, uh, find buyers for other people and then I would try to skim money off the top. But I found that like doing that, like the effort involved was not worth it because I didn't have enough people that I could sell to. I was doing it for gold. Like I'm not, I wasn't doing it for real money. A scalper? No, the thing is, like, like I would try to scalp. I, like, look, look, man, I try to get. Well, I, but ball, dude, I had to get whatever. I, if I can get it, I get it. That's all there is to it. It's way more then, sophisticated than that. Yeah, I know it is. Around, like, I'm, they dish I'm out everybody's it. salary, and then the community keeps a portion for themselves. Yeah, there you Boosters go. Boosters get a cut, but so does the advertiser. They exactly. Set it up after all. During that run, if a booster makes a mistake, they will often be investigated perhaps fined or given a strike. Yeah. If they get too many strikes, they'll be fined. They're out. And that means that you'll only ever be boosted by people who have been proven and curated. Which sure. does sound... Yeah, no, it, it's... No, the thing is, like, of course this happens uh, because it, it's bad. Because I remember Jeff... Oh, my God. Uh, Jeff would mess up the carry sometimes. And then I would have to go back and talk to the buyer again... And, like, I would have to talk them off a cliff to, because they weren't going to buy anything from us anymore because Jeff messed up the run. And so now we're not going to get any money. And, and so I'm like, oh, my God, this happened. Like, so, like, yes. Like, it's so important because a lot of the people, you got to also remember, is a lot of the people that are buying these boosts, they don't have a lot of time. That's why they're usually buying the boosts. So they want to have their shit done faster. Great. Also, most of these services actually do involve you playing. So yep. you actually get to experience the content, albeit with a bit less challenge and a lot less stress. Yeah. Fundamentally, a it's a lot like randomly getting an insanely good group in the group finder, but reliable, repeatable, and on demand. Imagine that. So to sum it up, they've made it convenient, low risk, and professional. Hell, if your run goes wrong, you could even get a refund. Yeah. These communities have moderators, they have customer support staff, and of And the reason why you can get a refund is it's a buyer's market. Uh, there's a lot more people that are unemployed who can kill Mythic Sylvanas than people with a bunch of real-life money who are looking to buy Mythic Sylvanas. So that's that's what it is, is it's a, it's a buyer's market. So if you fuck up, they just replace you with somebody else real quick. Like, real quick. That's it, it's done. Is he complaining about boosting or advertising for it? I'm just like, it, it's not about, let me tell you something. I don't hate the player. I hate the game. What do you think? I make a video on this and now everybody's going to start boosting. That's already been happening. Like the reality is that if Blizzard cared about this, they could stop it. Like Blizzard could probably hire three people. That's a lot for them, but they could hire three people and they could solve this problem pretty much entirely, like ni over 90%, but they're not going to do that because they don't care and if they don't care then why the fuck should i care how could blizzard stop boosting just ban people that do it T uh, suspend them that do it it's easy what do you mean like you like you couldn't like you couldn't figure out who's boosting uh this guy uh he joined this uh this raid and he gave the raid leader 
8 million gold and then they did Mythic Sylvanas. It's the first time he ever raided with this guild and the guy that got Mythic Sylvanas it turned out that he traded it to the guy that gave 8 million gold. Wow. I think that we might have a potential boosty boy here. We just, not enough evidence. Yeah, you never know. And he jumped off the platform and killed himself in phase one. And they told him to do it in, in raid chat. Removing the token. Yeah, this this will happen. Really, I mean, you, but there is some truth to what you guys, are, what some people are saying in chat, is that if you have the WoW token, it is almost impossible to stop this. Yeah, it, it, it's almost impossible to fucking stop this because you're going to have like smaller transactions. You're going to have items instead of the gold for transactions uh, to uh, bypass uh, automated thresholds that... Uh, that, that create like a red flag on your account for it to be uh, reviewed like it, it's, it's it's always a cat and mouse game but the reason is because you you fucking put the mouse in there in the first place with the goddamn wow token advertisers also that you can have a good experience imagine that. they've got treasurers managing the gold they have wow. people running social media and branding they have technical staff to set up the discord bots and their management back end it's a big operation. I think so this is... That's why people... If you want to have my honest opinion, I think it's cool. Like, I do, because I I did this on a really rudimentary level back in, like, Cataclysm and a little bit in Mists of Pandaria. So, like, to see people doing it now, like, full tilt and being successful, it is kind of cool for me to see, even though I, I wish I wasn't seeing it. They have ads, too? Yeah. I'll boost more now. It's not like doing something on a dodgy website back in 2008. No, it's now, not. Now, it is a very well-designed user experience. Oh, yeah. Now, to be clear, there is no doubt that boosting, in a way, perverts the very idea of aspects of World of Warcraft as a video game. Yes. And it is undeniably pay to win. But it's yes. also a consequence of WoW being an MMO with player-driven services and rewards that people want, but can't necessarily- I don't think that it's a, a result of any of that. I think that it is purely a result of being able to buy gold with real money. It's that simple. You can buy gold with real money. There we go! ...necessarily attain. Not to mention the community's unwillingness to take a chance on unproven players. In fact, paying a booster to get the curve achievement on you which ironically creates an even bigger problem with unproven players because now you have people link ahead of the curve sylvanas you look them up on the armory and that's the only boss they've killed isn't that interesting so you have people faking achievements there are so many people it's actually ironic people hate the idea of having to link an achievement to get a uh, to get into something well now everybody buys all their achievements so you don't want to link achievements anymore because nobody trusts them. It's actually worked. They've gotten rid of it. Look them up on law progress and see how quick they died. Yeah, but like, what are you gonna do? You want to? You, you want a you uh, fucking uh, a, a letter of recommendation? Do you want three references that aren't family members? You want their ten year work history too? What are you gonna spend all this fucking time for just to get an invite into heroic? Nobody's got that fucking time. They only do that for guild invites for mythic. Yeah, yeah. At least you send them a fax of your credit score too. Your character early on in a raid tier could be the thing that unlocks you being able to do more actual raiding. Yeah. As odd as that may sound. That's what people do. They buy curve because if they have curve, they can go and they can get invited to raids. That is, however, a topic for another day. Because right now yeah. we need to discuss the actual boosting business itself, its many quirks, and its many warts. All right, okay. let's be frank. We've been talking to a variety of people, including boosters, management, and even the owner of Hukan. And they all had a lot to say. Okay. To clear up some misconceptions, though, let's define RMT, real money transaction, which usually applies to two things, paying directly for services or paying directly for gold with real life money. Yeah. As we understand it, most of this is paid. So, like, buying a WoW token is RMT. Like, that's that's really what it is. Like, I would say that RMT, in my opinion, 
Like, the bad part of it is whenever you're able to make real money from playing the game. Because that's really what the issue is, is that the incentive for doing this is because people can get money and take it out of the game. Because you need, you need both. You need people that want to put money into the game, and you also need people that want to take money out of the game. Because there's a lot of these people, like, let's, let's look at this realistically. If you're boosting all day, well, you don't have a job, right? Because you're fucking boosting all day. So you need to get that money and sell it for, get the gold and sell it for real money. Yeah, it neat life. That's what it is. Uh, that's the job. Yeah, uh, that's that's what, yeah, Safeway won't uh, give me food for WoW Gold. Yeah, so they, they transfer it over. And that's really the issue is that uh, a lot less people would be boosting if they knew that the only thing they could get out of it is WoW Gold. Now, a lot of them boost because they know that they can transfer that WoW Gold to real money. Paying for gold, and that's where some gold only claims become a smokescreen. Because boosters can 100% officially deal in gold. Yep. But buyers can buy gold with money, Imagine that. trade the gold for a boost, yeah. and then the boosters can sell that gold later for money via any number of services. Which all, by the way, are pretty much against the TOS. So that's where, that's where the TOS gets broken. It's not with the money coming into the economy, it's with the money going out of the economy. That's what happens. It's dirty it's gold, but it is still just gold. Yeah. Let's talk about the value of boosting. Okay. One source's estimate for the size of the boosting market is over 10 million euro per year. Yeah, so mm -hmm. literally millions. This is split across a lot of people globally, but there are reportedly a select few making six figure sums from running the show. Oh yeah, no doubt. And this is, this is what happens, right? Is like you have the people that are making six figures from doing this. This isn't uh, Jeremiah the mage. Okay. This is, um, I, I don't know, whoever the fuck, some random guy, Sven in Sweden, who owns the boosting company, who's shaving money off of everybody's top, right? Think of it like a pyramid scheme, and Sven's up at the top, getting all the fucking money. See what I'm saying? That's how it happens. That's where they make the money. It's not the guys that are actually doing... See, if you want to make a lot of money... The best thing to do is to get other people to do the work for you and then you just take money off the top of that because that way you can just uh, apply that service to a bunch of people and through an aggregate and just kind of the, the law of large numbers make a lot of money. Uh, that's how it works. It's like in Cookie Clicker whenever you get a bunch of cookie farms. You want to get cookie farms. You don't want to keep clicking. Even if you can click faster than a cookie farm, You'll get enough cookie farms to where it's just going to be more. Is this part of the pie? This is a pecan pie. Gallywix, for example, was apparently a huge payday for those at the top. Yeah. Of course, until Blizzard banned them. Make no mistake, this is a serious industry with serious players. Oh, yeah. For some, it is in fact how they make a living especially those in less well-off countries. Mm -hmm. The Westerners paying for- That's a really good, uh, really good insight Bellior has there, is that if you're working, uh, let's say you live, uh, I, I talked to Nick, uh, I talked to Nick yesterday. He said the people working at McDonald's in Norway make $25 an hour. That's a lot of money. But let's say you live in Venezuela. Let's say you live in uh, where are some other countries where uh, the economy's fucking terrible and it's just a complete shithole and uh, you can't make any money? Uh, Brazil, I don't know. I feel like Brazil has like some really nice places. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of don't want to say the USA. Bro, if you actually think the USA is in the same universe as something like El Salvador, you need to leave your um, fucking upper middle class gated community and, uh, you know, get out of your Cadillac that your dad bought for you and open your fucking eyes and look at the world. Shut the fuck up. Our Argentina. Jesus. What privilege to think that America is even in the same universe as uh, Venezuela, uh, El Salvador. Ugh. A lot of guys that live in these shitty countries, 
This is a way for them to actually make a legitimate living that's competitive with other things that they could do. For services at Western rates translates to a lot of money in some places. As an example, the Nova boosting community offers a Mythic Plus 15 mm -hmm. run for 270,000 gold. Assuming a player's cut is 20% of that 270k, yep. they would earn about 54k gold. On our server, okay. Ravencrest, buying gold usually seems to average out to about 1 euro 35 per 10k gold. That is right. 54k gold, equating to 7 euro 29 cents. That's now, a lot of let's money. be conservative and assume that selling gold That's a only lot of earns you 50% of the money and that the selling service perhaps pockets yeah, the rest. Yeah. yeah, I would say you're well, buying it for like 60%. that about €3.65 per dungeon. $3 a dungeon. Now, if we actually look at Serbia oh. as an example, €3.65 is worth around 420 Serbian dinars. How convenient. The minimum wage is 175 per hour, and the average wage is around 400 an hour. So using some rough math, a Serbian player could do one Mythic Plus per hour, 40 hours a week. And like, you know it sucks. Like I said this before, is that uh, if you really think that it's not that bad over in Serbia, if you want to make an Eastern European mad, ask them about their local politics. That's all you have to do. Ask them about their local politics and they will make themselves mad. Every single fucking one of them. Yeah, that's it's that simple, man. Serbian here, I ain't mad. Look, dude, it is what it is. Serbia is beautiful and I love my politicians. Okay, that's another uh, 400 din right there. How about that? And make above uh, there you go. the country's average wage. That's nuts. Now that said, Pay we've comments, been told yeah. that boosters themselves, the actual players, they're really not making out like bandits here. No. Of course, like in many situations, the real people making the profit are... The bobbies. The middlemen. The people actually running things. The bobbies. The advertiser for Nova, in our example, would get a 10% to 20% cut Referral of the fee. gold for actually setting up the boost. Exactly. They could then, That's if they're where doing you really make well, the money. set up multiple boosting runs per hour. Exactly. And that, of course, would entail a lot less effort than actually running those the dungeons as a part of the boosting labor force, it scales meaning much they better. would earn more per hour. One person we spoke to actually claimed to us to earn between 2,000 euro and 4,000 euro a month through organizing runs for only a few hours per night. In it's that easy. Uh, it, it really is. It's that easy. Now, now the way you do it, uh, this is the main thing, right? Is the way you do it is you have to, like, I, I know how this shit works. If you're making a lot of money, the main thing that you're dealing in is you're dealing in individuals with a lot of money. You're basically dealing with um, trust fund kids, oil princes, and bobbies. A and you find these people, and, and what, are the, what, are the, what do game developers call them? They call them whales, right? Like there's literally, like what they're doing is the same thing that the developers are doing, but it's just, uh, it, it, it's, it's happening organically. So that's basically what happens. A lot of millionaire average Joes nowadays. Exactly, right? You've got a guy. Uh, this is really what it comes down to, right? You've got a single guy. He's 27. He makes $110,000 a year as a programmer. And he doesn't live in San Francisco. So he's got a, he doesn't have a girlfriend. Uh, he doesn't do anything else besides play WoW and hang out with his friends sometimes. He's got $50,000 a year of disposable income. And the only thing else he spends it on is weed, and that's not even that much. So he's sitting there with all this money, giving you money all the time. So you want to be really, really good friends with Frederick the Programmer, and, you know, some oil prince, and some trust fund kid, and, and you talk to them, you have a personal relationship with them. It's really important, like, whenever you're doing, especially, like, repeat business with, like, big customers, they have to like you. They do. They have to like you. Uh, I'm telling you, like, I, I could I could go through this so, for, for, like, hours about, like, strategies and fucking convert. Like, it's just so much about it. Uh, but it's just, yeah, connecting with the customer. Yeah, you, you make them happy. Because there's a lot to be said with a person that enjoys doing business with you. 
that they and they enjoy doing business with you like that's that's what it really is there's definitely a lot to it exactly and um I, it's like people don't really talk a lot about the um i feel like the the business of uh like the personal aspect of business is a lot of times not talked about because i think that it, it's considered like manipulative or something in that in that way and like the only time it is talked about it's by like people that uh you know they, they again like they post like instagram quotes of things that they thought of uh behind a picture of elon musk to make the things seem more legitimate so they they got no fucking idea what they're talking about uh but yeah you, you have to have do you have a graph for that no i have a pie um so that that's that's a good example and um just in general that's what it is suck them off during the deal sales one-on-one it's not about suck them off. Like you, you just, you completely miss the point if that's what you do. Like my, my opinion is I treat the person, this is my best advice, okay, for sales. Treat the person that you're selling to as a friend. Like treat them as a friend and that's going to make a huge impact because they are a friend. They're helping you, you're helping them. It's good. There's nothing weird about that. It's good. That's good. Yeah, treat them as a friend. Fairness, that's a pretty damn sweet hustle. I think we can all agree. Definitely. Another said Two they could make a month over a 100 hours. euro a night from boosting at the right times and around 20 euro an hour from farming gold in Classic when TBC launched. Again, $20 nice an hour. Having skin in the game oh like God. this can also cause some spicy situations. We heard mm -hmm. one tale of a boosting guild actually taking revenge yeah. for missed payouts by, uh, well, from what we heard, some doxing and threatening going on. Uh, I had this happen too because I used to, um, so whenever uh, we were running dry and I wanted to still make a lot of money, what I would do is I would effectively subcontract things out. So, like, I would get a guy to, like, he would buy a bear mount from me for 12k, and then I would pay everybody in the group 2k. Well, there's four people in the group, that's 6k. Where does the other 6k go? So, people would occasionally get mad about this, but I just... I, I I just told him like I don't give a fuck like this is just like I mean you're making 2k for nothing I had to find this guy if you're gonna complain about it then don't come and then they just keep showing up right so that's what it is but like it uh you can do that but it's again like remember what I told you uh, I told you guys about like never to make the person that you are uh that you're doing business with feel like they got the short end of the stick remember what I, I said about that it's so important to do that because if you don't do that, like they'll they'll fuck you over some point in the future in a way you can't even predict right now, usually. So uh, that's my best advice. Don't shit where you eat. There it is. So it's it's a bit of both. I've done both. That's how I know. To RMT, the real money transactions. Its prevalence in boosting is interesting. X boosters told us that while nobody ever says anything publicly, a lot was obvious, like known boosters showing up to raid, uh, being unable to afford consumables, despite it being very public knowledge that they were paid a whole bunch of gold from their boosting salary that very week. So the question then is, if they can't afford their consumables, where did the gold go? I wonder. We've outright been How told, did that, quote, where did it, there is no clean gold boosting, and that source did... Sort of course there's no clean gold boosting why would you clean gold boost man like there are especially whenever you get into there are people that like that do it for just gold and that's it they don't really give a fuck like definitely but usually these people are part of you know like what bellier is talking about a larger apparatus or organization that at some level is making real money sort of indicate most named communities if you're involved in boosting and not making money, some people would say that you're just making money for somebody else. There it is. That's exactly so, what I said. How do people actually sell the gold? That's a big question that I had. And I'm sure that you have as well. Because you can't just start trading gold. That stuff is all tracked and scrutinized by automated systems. Yep. Well, one way is at the payment stage. Advertisers and buyers can privately discuss payment gold or cash. 
if the buyer pays the advertiser in cash and then the advertiser pays the boosting community they work for with their own gold, well, <laughs> once these advertisers know who can do RMT, then they know they've essentially got a whale. Yeah. Them, the only two people who have knowledge of the money, the real money changing hands, is the advertiser and the payer. Everything else goes on normally, and you never have to deal with an outside seller. It's really smart, and in a way where... For yeah, some... that's the thing, is that it's, um, it's always better for less people to know than more people to know whenever you're doing something like this like if you're doing anything under the table nobody can tell the secret it, it, it can never get out if it never got in in the first place never tell people unless you have to everything on a need to know basis the boosting communities it's extremely hard for them to actually track and fix and from a lot of the people we talk to they genuinely do want to track and fix those problems because they don't seem to like it. Another way is one that shocked us. We've been told that Blizzard do not track guild transfers. So put a lot of gold in a guild bank, give somebody withdrawal permissions or the guild themselves, and that's that done. Apparently, this is invisible to Blizzard's automated auditing. So this is actually, reportedly, how most large gold transfers are done. Then, there is gold laundering via WoW token. Buy WoW token, turn them into Blizzard balance, then buy gift copies of Battle.net games, and then sell those on reselling websites. Yeah. Technically, that is not RMT. It's just against the spirit of the system. And in a way, it does mean that if you farm up a whole bunch of gold... There you go. You can get some real money out of it. Probably not at the best pay rate, let's be real. You get a shitty pay rate, And with rate, all that that's said, true. we haven't even talked and, about... And that's the thing, right? Is that, like, if you're doing this all the time... He, he, like, let's say you're making 30% less money, okay? You're making 30% less money. Well, if you only make $1,000, you're only missing 300 bucks. But if you make $100,000, you're missing $30,000. So, for the people that are a lot more serious about it they're going to always go towards the TOS options because it makes the most money and they're doing it at scale. Uh, if you're not doing it at scale, then yeah, this is what you do. Pure gold selling itself or pure RMT boosting. But those are nothing new. There are a ton of websites that you can just no, they're go not. and you know, buy from or sell to. The fact they still operate after all of these years proves that they're doing at least something. Oh, and as for WoW Token, well, apparently it is only a small portion of how gold is moved. An extremely rough estimate that we were given was around 30%, with the rest being RMT. Now, I wouldn't put a massive amount That's of stock in this, though, as nobody knows That's for sure. That's a lot sure. of RMT. Holy shit. But it shit. is a multi-million market. 30% of that is still quite a lot. The last thing, and it's more of an aside in terms of scope, there are also streamers who will boost people in return for subs and donations. Which essentially, I mean, yes, it's- Which is against the rules. It's not essentially. It's not essentially. It is against the rules. It's a donation, uh, but come on. What, we, got in, we almost got in trouble for this uh, on the Moose is Loose. Do you guys remember the Moose is Loose? Who remembers the Moose is Loose? All the moosins. So fucking incarnate, I incarnate is in fucking voice chat with me, and he just randomly says, "If you send us a picture of your boobs, we'll give you a free moose." And he was getting girls sending him their boobs to get a moose. Like I, I couldn't believe it. I was like, I was like, oh, incarnate, like, oh, we're gonna get in so much trouble for this. But like, luckily we didn't. That was like five years ago. So we, we missed that. But oh my God. And, and he was inviting them. And like, I, I, like he's like, invite this girl. Oh. And I'm like, did she pay? He's like, yeah, she did. Boosting is everywhere. Basically, you just need to look for it. Yeah, of As it is. horrible as this all sounds, remember, this is one side of the argument. We do not claim to be serious investigative journalists, and no one has offered us 
extremely hard evidence on a platter. So this is primarily us talking with people involved. Oh, bro, in it's common sense. It's a priori. Like, come on. It, it's common fuck. It's obvious. Okay? It's fucking obvious. In the scene to varying degrees and trying to work out what's going on. We have spoken to community leaders for their side of the story, though. So I think we should cover that next because okay. it's also very interesting. Let's hear about that. A defense of boosting. All right. For let's, boosting let's communities, their survival depends on how far they can be removed from RMT. Blizzard yep. are actually given access to spreadsheets and internal tracking tools that these communities use in order to audit them when necessary so as to ensure that no gold is missing. You really okay. tell me that Blizzard's doing that shit instead of actually just banning the bots? You tell me they're doing this? No way. Why would Blizzard even trust the fucking- Why would he trust their books? There's no accountability. How can Blizzard be so stupid? I don't believe this because it requires Blizzard to do something. That usually doesn't happen. Yeah, you type anything into Excel. Cam, in particular, who we talked to, said that by bringing boosting into the light, yeah. they can actually help players avoid RMT and remove bad actors like scammers from the picture. When asked what they actually do to root it out, they said that they basically ensure that there was a culture of investigating suspicions within their organization and that when evidence is found, we take all accusations very seriously. We are dedicated to our culture of not having RMT. How can anybody believe that? Like, we have investigated ourselves, and we've found no wrongdoing. Can you believe that? They remove people, and they actually pass evidence on to their Blizzard contact so that in-game bans can be set up in a community of somewhere couldn't around- that, uh, Couldn't that be used in a bad way? If, like, they talk to somebody from Blizzard? And, like, because I'm sure that- Here's the thing. Do you think that they, they, they refer every single person who they suspect RMTing to Blizzard? I think no. I think they only refer the ones they don't like. They root out their competition. There's that too. Around 56,000 players, 56,000, they have actually removed 700 RM tiers in total. So not bad. Hukan also provided some example prices, claiming that they intentionally- There's only 55,300 more to go. The undercut RMT-based competitors so that uh, basically gold prices paid for through our token are cheaper. Now, obviously, this does not account for buying gold through RMT and then passing that along mm -hmm. to who can, but it's not like that's something that they can track as an org. So to this end, they hope to push the less reputable vendors out of the market entirely. It's kind of like the popular idea of legalization replacing the black market. As to whether that actually happens or not, especially in this case, it's obviously hard to know. Anyway, who can at least- I think you still are gonna have a- the, the problem with that is that like, this is what happens as far as I know in California, is you still have the, uh, the illegal drug dealers because of the, all the taxes uh, on weed over there is so high that you still have a market for, um, uh, for illegal purchases. Like, that's my understanding. I mean, I'm not, I don't live there. I don't, I don't know. Like, same with Colorado. Like, it, it, that's what logically would make sense, right? Can't compete with an illegal market? Yeah, yeah, basically. Uh, am I an illegal drug dealer? That's not correct. I mean, but, but, but how is it not correct, though? Like, I, I don't see how it's not correct. Same in Canada? Yeah, I mean, it, it's like that logically, that's what would make sense. Uh, tax rate on weed is 50%, basically? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, like, why would people not want to buy it? Because illegal makes no money? Uh, I don't know about that. The, how'd Pablo Escobar have all that money? How'd that happen? Yeah, how, how'd that, how that fucking happen? Of course it does. How do you think they buy an expensive car? Uh, street per ounce is 40 here and 90 in San Diego. That's a lot. That's a whole lot. But like, all I'm saying is that I, I find this argument to be not very strong. 
Least is publicly sure in their mission to stamp out RMT and has provided evidence of their efforts, uh, actually naming one RMT booster they caused to shut mm -hmm. down. So that's their take. Another community, so they, so they got Starlight, rid of their competition. reached out for wow. a conversation with us as well. They were very open about the difficulty, actually, behind keeping RMT out, like buyers bringing in dirty gold. Mm -hmm. But they are proud to report that they haven't had any Blizzard bans hit their community for over a year, while they say that other communities experience... Yeah, because there probably haven't been any bans at all in over a year. Let's be honest. That's probably the real reason. It regularly. In general, the perceived level of professionalism from the people we talk to here, I mean, it, it is quite impressive, you know? They, well, of they course they're going to be professional, Bellior, because they want you to give them a positive spin in the video. Of course that's what it is, because they stand to gain. This is the same thing as, like I said, with the business thing. Is that like, yes, obviously, like you want to do good business and treat somebody well because it is in your best interest to do so. Duh. Fucking duh. Like, I, it's it's that simple, man. Starlight's actually great, though. Well, I, I don't know about Starlight. I, I have no idea because, like, I've never interacted with them. But if you take the top 10 people that are involved with Starlight, whoever they are, how many of them do you think are making real money from Starlight or things related to it? I, I think probably 10 of them. If I had to guess nine or 10, only at the top, that's the only thing that matters. That creates the whole economy. Yeah, Star, Star, uh, Starlight, excuse me. Yeah, I have no idea. Oh, who kind of sucks? Six of seeing them all chats. Yeah, etc. Like, I have no idea. End game for boosting is always RMT. Let's not be naive here. Yeah, exactly, man. Is pyramid scheme? Well, yeah, a lot of things are pyramid schemes, man. Like, look at this. Uh, the uh, organization of a company. It's a pyramid scheme too. Put, uh, you know, they put advertisers through specific mm -hmm. RMT avoidance training. They collect gold from only verified characters, and the admins even personally verify every transaction. I think that is the sorts of things that people would want to hear. But there is one burning question we had on our mind. Earlier on in this video, we explained why the sellers and the buyers do boosting. But why it's the also hell- also like they say they evaluate every transaction. What does this mean? What does this mean? Y y you know what I mean? Do the organizers need all of this gold? Is WoW Gold really worth putting all of this time and effort into? No, it's, it's not. It's obvious to anyone yes. that they must be doing it for the money. Yes. So we just decided to be upfront and ask, how do they justify it without them getting paid or their staff getting paid? Then, as to how they justify their time, well, they have over 60 staff on board and ensure that each member only has a few hours of work to do per week, which essentially means that nobody has got to invest too much of their time. And it was stressed to us that no one does it professionally, that it's a hobby project for everybody involved. Over at Starlight, they say much the same. They pay out well, gold. you think it's a hobby to pay the web hosting? It's a hobby to pay to pay the web hosting. Costs that costs real money. Uh, <laughs> oh my god! Old for staff to get trading card game mounts, black market auction house items, and Battle.net balance but that it's mostly a passion project by like-minded people. Now, you can choose whether to believe that or not, but yeah, it is what they say. I will choose. According to Hukan, they keep their costs to almost zero. Free hosting services are used to host everything except their website, which the owner pays for out of pocket. They pay all of their staff in gold, and they try to ensure that staff don't then go and sell that gold on. As for why they do it, well, it's for gold and entertainment. The way that it was explained to us is that it's basically another way to play World of Warcraft. The same reason why somebody may choose to lead a guild in WoW or to be a mythic raider. They do it as a part of their game experience. And a degree of that is certainly quite understandable. I mean, you build a big, cool organization. You see it thrive. You see your numbers go up. You got a whole bunch of gold. 
in much the same way that there are people who just enjoy gold farming and playing the auction house, even though they're really earning more gold than they can realistically spend in the game. Yeah, that's why they sell it. One of the overall things we've heard is that these communities are just that, communities, uh, like a guild. And it's also like if you have three to four hours of work uh, per day, let's say, that doesn't mean that you're not playing the game the other five hours. So these people are still, it's like you think that's the only time they're working is just a couple of hours. No, man, it's it's all the other time invested. Like I can tell you right now, like having a small business is not just the time that you're on the clock. Sure, they don't want to work more. Yeah, exactly. They do work three to five hours a week, not day. Yeah, and then the thing is, like, it's cascaded down with different people responsible for it. You can easily spend hundreds of millions of gold on TCGs, rare mount uh, items, black market. I don't think about hundreds of millions of gold. I think that might be a bit much. But um, some of the stuff, definitely, yeah. When you have your own business, you're always working. Yeah, I just, I don't really buy this. Formed around a specific goal, they worked together and ended up becoming friends. And that means that to many staff, boosters, and boosties, they are places to hang out, to meet people, and to play the game together. I mean, if you're doing a bunch of boosted raids with a bunch of other incredible raiders and you've got good camaraderie, you could certainly see that being a fun experience. Yeah. Hell, people on both sides of the fence have told us that they believe that boosting is actually helping to keep World of Warcraft alive for what they see as being a massive portion of the players. Boosters find competition and camera. So is botting. I, I, I mean, so, yeah, so is botting. I, I mean, it keeps the game alive because more people are playing it. Like, I, this is not a very strong argument to me. And as for the boosties, well, they can finally get groups to do content and a lot more. We'll cover these impacts in a good bit more depth in part two, but it's worth saying that boosting does have a few positives. Sadly, we cannot ignore the fact that the act itself introduces the concept of pay to win in a way that hurts the integrity of World of Warcraft's gameplay in a few yeah. aspects, that bad actors can profit from it, that token is a way for Blizzard to profit. I find it very, um, if Blizzard is actually involved and uh, working with these people, I find that to be uh, very disappointing. Very, very disappointing because uh, the fact is that like Blizzard is now like enabling this kind of content. They're enabling this kind of uh, of incentive, right? Yeah, it's what you guys are saying, incentives. Absolutely, because what they're doing is they're they're actively harming the uh, they're they're actively harming the integrity of the game by allowing people to buy and sell things with the wow token because if you don't have the wow token this is what makes it less complex is that if you don't have the wow token transferring large sums of gold is now much more sus and buying gold is much more sus the, the wow token muddies the waters which makes it hard for blizzard to differentiate people that are buying things with the wow token and people that are just buying gold you see what I'm saying? From the pay to win side, and that it's nigh impossible to distinguish a community that is feigning innocence from one that is genuinely trying to be clean. No, it's, a bit of it's, it's not impossible. Uh, the way you can tell is if they have, uh, if they stand to gain. If they stand to gain from doing something, they're probably doing it. If they don't stand to gain, then they're probably not doing it. It's that fucking simple. But he said, she said, without any significant evidence. So, in a way, feel free to come to your own conclusions. Yeah. As it stands, boosting communities aren't doing anything wrong by the letter. No. They're unless not. they're involved in RMT. And in an Which ideal world, are. Blizzard would be able to snuff out the RMT. Which Sadly, they don't. Blizzard can't, or maybe won't. As Don't. it stands, boosting communities they are can. a symptom. They're not really a disease. One of the bigger issues here is that Blizzard does not have a real policy on boosting or on pay to win. That is quite obviously a major point of contention. A few things surprised me here. So let's talk about Blizzard Entertainment's role 
in this entire situation. Okay. This is what really matters. Because the boosters, I don't really... Um, the Wild Token muddies the waters. There's a very simple activity to observe whether or not someone is transferring gold in excess of normal activity. Yeah, it is. But what you're saying is that there are false net, there are false positives. And whenever you have a lot of gold being injected into the economy regularly, you will have false positives for that. And that's what I'm saying is because you if you basically create like way more, sorry, false. Uh, yeah, false positives. Uh, that That's what happens. And ultimately, like, this is the thing. Is the boosters, I honestly don't really hold much against them. I don't. Because you don't have any fucking money, and you're good at WoW. Well, of course you're going to sell carries. No shit. It's because you need money. Fucking duh. Like, yeah. Like, if I lived in Venezuela, I'd be selling carries like a motherfucker. Like, absolutely. Who would not do this? It makes perfect sense. It's not that they're bad. It's Blizzard enables it to happen. It's completely Blizzard's fault, in my opinion. I don't think it's the booster's fault at all. People uh, will always take advantage of a system. And even if you get rid of all the people that are boosting today, you'll have new ones to replace them tomorrow. And this will continue happening forever until the system is changed. Because that's what really matters. Blizzard are barely involved, and that essentially is the problem. Yeah. Before the time of the banning of the Gallywix boosting community, Blizzard was highly active and would engage with communities directly, auditing their transfers and informing them of any major bans coming their way and why those bans were taking place. After the banning of Gallywix, though, they've apparently cut contact and now just ban RMT whenever they can prove it internally. Obviously, that's smart. Uh, it, it, that's, that's a smart thing to do. Because why would you trust somebody if there's no accountability for the trust? Like with accounting, if you if you put in like false sheets or something like that and, and you submit false shit, well, you can go to jail. Uh, with this, like it's very hard to prove that it was uh, intentionally false. Uh, there's a lot of ways of obfuscation. Obviously, this could coincide with Blizzard cutting non-development staff. I doubt that. To be honest, I doubt this. Uh, I If they had 190 employees dedicated to RMT, listen, if you hire me, just me, I could probably do uh, probably a quarter of it. Like, I, I could do a massive amount of it because I know what to look for. There's no way it was 190 people or even remotely near that that were involved with it. Communities seem keen to help here from what we could tell, but communities don't really have the resources. And by not hiring the needed staff, Blizzard are actively letting RMT happen and the situation get out of hand. Yeah. It is their world. It is their job to manage and police this stuff. And they are just not doing it. It's as simple as that. Yeah. And I think you can see how maybe a big wig in Activision Blizzard making hiring and firing decisions well, would to quite... be honest, like, Blizzard's got bigger problems than fucking boosting and WoW. Like, let's be honest. Uh, boosting and WoW is not even in their top five. Simply not understand any of this whatsoever and would basically be clueless, leading to issues for all of us on the ground. Apparently, and this was a little bit surprising to me, evidence of Gallywix engaging in RMT, was provided to Blizzard months before Blizzard made their move. Wow, Blizzard that's really surprising. I, I can't believe, I, I can't believe they would take forever to do something. That's great. Uh, uh, wow. Thank you, Bellior. Uh, I, what, what a shock. I'll be right back. Bro, I literally almost tripped on this. I, I, I legit almost tripped on this. I was about to fall all the way down the stairs, which would have been funny, but I don't have a camera over here. I'll be right back. Okay. I have these, uh, these socks. Uh, they keep falling down. They're these, uh, I'll tell you, I'll tell a little story real quick. So I got these, my dad, my dad had an operation. Uh, my dad had to have an operation for, uh, so I, f I forgot like what the fuck. It was like some kind of thing and they needed to do surgery and they basically tried to uh, uh, sedate him 
but because he's done so many drugs and he takes so many painkillers and different drugs that are prescribed to him, they weren't able to sedate him normally. So what happened is that he was uh, on the operating table and he kept telling jokes to the people operating on him and he was fucking them up. So they had to extra sedate him. And then they call me and they tell me this and I'm like, okay, fuck. All right, fine. And like, so your dad might not really be, he might not really be all there in the head. So I get there and my dad's sitting on the side of the bed and he takes a, a, a bag of masks and he goes like this. He, he, he sweeps it behind himself and he looks at me and I put it in the bag and then We'd steal the whole bag of masks from the hospital on the way out. He was fine. Yeah, he was fine. It, it was no big deal. <laughs> so that's where I got the I got the socks. That that's that's what it was. Why steal masks? Because we need we needed some more. We didn't want to buy. Yeah. Blizzard basically was just kind of lying on it. Blizzard only finally acted when somebody threatened to post all of their evidence on Reddit and make it go public. Yeah. Once that threat was made, somehow Blizzard decided to start actually taking action. It's crazy how, like, uh, whenever uh, you... This is what I said before, like, with the ripcord. It's crazy how whenever the right pressure is applied, things that are impossible become possible. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that so surprising? Wow. What should I have to do with the socks? Oh, he stole the socks, too. Yeah, it was all he it was all in the bag, like because they gave him a bunch of stuff while he was there, and so he just put every all all the stuff that was in like the room in the bag, and then he left. Uh, that that's that, that's why, like, yeah, I got the socks too, but like the socks, like the the box of masks was a lot more. Since then, Blizzard have been given evidence of many, many more, but they've done nothing to follow up. Wow. In general, Blizzard buries their head in the sand, and Blizzard continues I've to heard profit about from WoW token, and make no mistake. The entire boosting economy makes a lot of money for Blizzard it does. via WoW token. It does. So they do have a financial incentive to basically just let it all roll. Yep. The same applies to bots. Bots generate an obscene amount of gold in World of Warcraft. For every group of bots just farming mobs for raw gold, your gold on your character right now becomes less valuable because of inflation. Hundreds of thousands per hour, 24 seven. Ever feel poor and wow? Ever feel more poor over time? That's why. Because Blizzard let bots yep. infest their game. Yeah. What has this got to do with boosting then? Well, if you need a ton of gold to match bot inflation, you can either buy it or make it. Not everyone can afford to buy gold. Not everybody would actually enjoy farming gold or playing the auction house, but maybe they're really good at the game. So they join a boosting community to earn some gold. Yeah, it creates a need. There are some more insidious ways the Blizzard are enabling it as well. Gold requirements, you know, fact of gold requirements to do things, the game's reward design, interface, community, etc. Those things are out of scope today. I don't really care about the uh, the game things, like buying legendaries and shit like that. I think that is just, that's what's always happened in the game, is there's always been BOEs. There's always been things like that that you can buy. Like, I, I don't think that's anything new or special, to be honest with you. And, like, you have more of that in Burning Crusade and Classic, and you don't have a WoW token in there. I, I don't really buy into the idea that Blizzard is designing the game in order to incentivize selling WoW tokens. I don't believe that. But I think that they're just simply ignoring the uh, the ways that people are using them. Okay, so look forward to our follow-up video diving into the design aspects that basically allow for all of this to happen. Finally then, WoW token. This certainly tipped the scales. Oh, yeah. Now, yeah, this is it. paying money for gold is acceptable in-game. Yep. So whales can legally be rich without earning it. Now, other players value gold more because it can become Battle.net balance or game time. Some yeah, people they don't have that will much money. buy a gift code, throw it in G2A or something like that, and try to make a little bit of side cash. And Blizzard profit Easy. from every one of those things sold. Boosting took off. Reporting it did 
nothing because it all looks above board, and before we knew it, our game looked somewhat unrecognizable. Hell, even if RMT magically ceased to exist, there would still be a conversation about boosting in the game, because it still would be, in a way, undeniably pay to win because of WoW token. We'll examine yeah, the- Yeah, the problem is the, the WoW token. The problem is that you can do it legitimately, is that you can, you can do it with real money. That's what the real issue is, in my opinion. Uh, I, I do not think the issue is uh, people farming gold and buying boosts. Like, in a, uh, in a fair economy, or, or sorry, a well-moderated economy, where botters are banned regularly and RMTers are banned regularly, I think that boosting is not that bad. Because, as I said before, it's the RP of a fat goblin getting carried around by a bunch of uh, strong, experienced adventurers while he collects all the loot at the end and calls himself the winner. Like, I feel like there's a really good RP for that and, like, there's a place for that. However, uh, whenever it's real money, it's just not. That, that's out the window, in my opinion. That's out the window. Impacts of gold generation and pay to win in depth in our next installment. So hold tight. First, I want to talk a bit about solutions. Get rid of the WoW token and ban people that RMT. Hire uh, a dozen people uh, that understand the game and understand RMT to, uh, and how it happens. Uh, to investigate accounts, and that's it. Like, the problem is that whenever an average player can identify ways that people RMT better than Blizzard, it goes to show that they don't really care. They're not really trying. Here's what we think is a deep truth. Blizzard cannot solve boosting. <laughs> At least not without radically changing how the game works. This is an MMO. I should be able to trade your character some gold in return for you giving me a hand. Yeah. That seems like a reasonable thing to happen yeah. in a virtual world with a virtual economy. True, real, a and good accurate. sector that we see in the auction house and a services sector that we sort of now see in boosting. The damage to how people play in a way has already happened. However, what we can do, what Blizzard can do, is mitigate the problem quickly and support the good parts of boosting while they're at it. Our immediate proposal is going to be controversial here. Okay. It could be to legitimize boosting somewhat. Basically make it a bit of a service that people can pay for in-game. Maybe give it an opt-in chat channel and ban service advertising from trade chat. Give it a tab in the group finder. Just call it services. Maybe somebody could list that they are willing to provide a service. Or maybe... If you, let's just say, you want to do some mythic Antorus, but you need a plus one and you can't really find anyone, maybe? I mean, why not just get them in trade chat, but you get the point. In a yeah, way... Yeah, I mean, like, that's definitely a perspective. Like, to me, I wouldn't really care that much about... I, that's, that's, like, completely... That is separate from the problem. Like, the problem is RMT. Boosting is not the problem to me. It's RMT is the problem. Boosting for a gold that you farmed, that you got legitimately, sounds good. Do what you want. But it's the RMT that's bad. So like Bellior is trying to solve a problem that at least I don't have. That would help to solve the usability problem RMT's that real the game money. has right now. Money, spending real money. Because there's advertisements sort of flooding, flooding everywhere again. without stepping on anybody's toes. I suppose as the saying goes, if you can't beat them, maybe give them a chair in the corner so that uh, you don't have to look at them. For a quick bit of personal opinion here, because I do want to throw some personal opinion in here, uh, I fundamentally yeah. do think that player-driven goods and services sectors are important parts of a virtual world. The issue really is that while hiring some muscle to protect your haulage ship in EVE Online or maybe, you know, do a hit on an EVE player who ganked you, that yeah. makes sense for an open-world sandbox game. But World of Warcraft is a theme park MMO with very, very different goals. Yeah. And that's basically the issue. Having a good sector is very easy to do right in a theme park MMO. Having a services sector is pretty easy to do in a sandbox. And I think a lot harder to do in a theme park MMO while still keeping the core of things be uncorrupted in terms of the game's progression well, you can't and rewards. Have both, in my opinion. And then magnify that 10x when WoW token exists. Yes. And 
because it's theme park versus That's sandbox. the real cost here. There's a here. big difference it's between the wild token, token and Plex in EVE, which is its equivalent. Now, the next part is going to be difficult and costly, but it needs to happen. A complaint that we heard from a community owner is that Blizzard quite simply does not have enough support staff, and that the staff that they do have are not trained. Well, so they're incompetent. Like, they don't know what they're doing. They have no idea. Like, how many times have you had a GM that didn't fucking know anything? And uh, do you want to know why that happens? It's because, number one, their training is bad. Number two, there's turnover for GMs really fast. So you don't have people that are very well experienced in arcane issues. In the, uh, the oh, well, this Cataclysm dungeon, like, oh, I had a ticket from this three years ago. I remember that. Uh, also, they're low paid. So people that uh, are more motivated to give more holistic support are not applying for those jobs because they're not being compensated properly. Uh, th there's a lot of reasons why it happens. That's actually not, it is the GM's fault ultimately, but it's like a, it's a domino, it's like dominoes, right? The GM is the last domino. So that's the one that you see. But you didn't see, like, the other five dominoes between, like, fucking the accounting division, the training division, uh, the workplace management, the work-life balance, the fuck, all the other ones. You're not seeing any more of those. You see what I'm saying? Like, those are the, uh, those are the other reasons. And each domino is, in, to some degree, this, the same level of importance. Blizzard needs to staff up on Game Masters and train them how to investigate and remove RMT. Yeah. These GMs yeah. also need to be Problem active solved. in chasing down bots because it's clear their automated and engineered solutions aren't quite cutting it yet. No, they suck. I mean, trade chat for some has been unusable for months, if not years. Well, I remember, like, fucking back in Mists of Pandaria, before they really got down on this at all, like, every single time that you would type in a trade chat, that shit would get overlapped in a second by somebody linking one of the Mists of Pandaria challenge mode phoenixes followed by Chinese letters in a website. Like, I'm telling you, man. Like, that's all trade chat was on KT. That's all it fucking was. Boy, and it's flooded with advertisements for boosts and the like. And they don't seem to have taken really any action wow. on any of this. They've just let it lie. It's perhaps as if those designing the game are just not particularly concerned. Or maybe they are being told care. to not budge in too much because Wild Token's doing well. Though that latter point is um, perhaps me just being a cynic. We also know that bans are essentially pointless right now. This is an important thing. Hardware IDs can be spoofed, and new accounts are extremely cheap compared to how much money can be made. Right? I think some people see this even within yeah. the boosting that exists for World of Warcraft The Burning Crusade Classic. Blizzard needs to up their game on all levels to target bots. Do you want me to show you? Do you want me to show you how to stop boosting? So we have a new NFT. We're going to mint a new F NFT right here. Okay. And so we're going to go ahead and this is time. And this is, let's just say money, right? Like whether this is gold or whatever. And the amount of money that you have to spend goes up like this Let, let's actually just i feel like it probably goes up it probably goes up i'm trying to think like because leveling you don't make as much money and, and then you start making more money uh once you're max level so the problem here is that this this line right here this line right here is the break even point this is the point where it becomes profitable to boost because if you are below this point, if you are below this point, the money that you have to spend on a sub and on a game license and on potentially a boost in Burning Crusade is more than the money you will make with each bot. But the reason why botting is going to happen is because botters are getting banned above the break-even point. And if you're getting banned above the break-even point, 
making more money is only a matter of scale. And that's what's happening, is that they're not catching them in here. If you were catching them in here, they wouldn't be botting anymore. You would completely remove botting. You understand, like not completely, like 99% remove botting because they can't make money off of it. You lose money botting. The reason why they're botting, like it, it, this sounds like forehead, but really the reason why they're botting is because it makes money. So ban them before it makes money. Zach, you're missing the point. What flavor is this pie? This is a dog shit ass pie. It's the worst kind of pie. Uh, they know that, then their numbers gradually decline. Yeah, it, it depends, right? So, like, th this is this is the reason why b why botting keeps happening. It's because Blizzard systems don't bot them before the botters hit their break-even point. It's that simple. Starting costs are actually cheaper, and there's room for profit is way easier to achieve. I'm sure that it is, and, and I, I, this is just simply a um, an example. Okay, like it's not accurate to a T. Uh, what if they're boosting instead of leveling from the ground? Uh, well, then that that would uh, that would increase this this point right here. Yeah, this is this is an oversimplification of the issue, just to explain a simple idea. It's, it's the theory of it. Target RMT and continually nuke them. That's essentially that. Otherwise, the players of their game will continue to suffer and the integrity of aspects of their gameplay yeah. will erode. Yeah. Honestly, that is most of it. Yeah. At least on the RMT and dark side. Yes. As for the game's design, they have a ton of work to do on rewards, on content, and on general gameplay. If more and more players are spending money to boost instead of engaging with the game properly, then the core design has essentially failed. It's failed as a game. We've been talking for a while, talking. though, That's so why. let's wrap up this part. I don't want to put our video editors through any more punishment. I don't care about that. We pay There's boosting. Fine. What's wrong with it as an industry? What is right with it as an industry? They're going to have to edit and this whole thing. hopefully enough information to help you come away with this with just more of an understanding of what's actually going on. My personal hope is that when you see the next boosting advertisement in-game, you'll actually understand what's going on behind it. There is a multi-million dollar market in your game. It's a market that makes the game worse for some, fun for others, with many making gold. Yeah, I would say but like a market cap of 10 million a year for boosting. You're if you're including like Chinese market as well, which I don't know if they are. I think that's about fair. I, I do. I, I think that's about fair. Yeah. Just thinking about like, just this is my assumption. Empty of people getting achievements they didn't really earn that much, and a few people making a big fat stack of cash. Yeah. Although boosting does have its advantages to some, I think overall, in a way, it needs addressed. We need to work out where it fits in the game. And more important than anything else, the prevalence of pay to win needs to be sorted out. Yeah. It can make WoW feel like Korean shovelware. That's not what we want, because we love WoW, and we want its integrity as a virtual world to remain. So that will be addressed. Look out. Speaking of integrity, after I finish this video, we're going to talk about the new store mount. Part two. Now, if you have any further experiences with boosting, do let us know. A whole bunch of people reached out to us based on me and Matt chatting about uh, just some cursory opinions on boosting on our stream. Perhaps this video will get a larger reach. So if you're adamantly against it, if you're for it, if you're in the middle, if you feel like we've not given you a fair shake of the stick, if you feel like there's other information we should know. See, to me, I, uh, this is what I do. This is how I look at things. Is that if it makes sense to me, then you telling me that that's not what's happening doesn't matter. See what I'm saying? So like any amount of evidence that is compiled with no real accountability of like what what is the the level of uh if I can trust this or not like how do I know if I can trust this why would I ever believe it like to me I I see stuff like this and it's uh it's obvious what's going on cynical nothing wrong with it isn't it crazy that like even though I'm very cynical about this stuff I'm usually right like I, I feel like I'm usually right about this stuff yeah it, and and we'll see what happens
it's not about being cynical. I, I think that it, it's about looking at things realistically and not letting people bullshit you. Like I'm not really much of a cynic in a lot of ways. I like I'm hopeful for some things because I have reason to be. I'm not hopeful for other things because I have reason not to be. That's what it comes down to. I'm, I try to be pragmatic. That's my goal. Do let us know. So that's basically that. Thank you for watching. A massive thank you as well to all of the sources who reached out to us and, um, you know, just gave some time to, um, to help us understand this for, um, you know, for, for our little investigation. We really appreciate uh, you guys taking the time to chat. So that's that. Have a wonderful day. A massive thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. If you want a quick website that looks <laughs> way better than a quick website, just go to Squarespace. Problem solved. Links down below. Might go get you 10% off. So thank you. Have a wonderful day. Look forward to part two. I'll see you next time. Bye. Uh, do you think it'll ever go away? Only if Blizzard wants it to. And I don't think boosting uh, for gold that's farmed legitimately really should go away. I think that's fine. You didn't mention PvP boosting, which is weird considering how much of it is going on. That's because PvP boosting probably... Uh, the reason why probably doesn't talk as much about PvP boosting is that the amount of account sharing and PvP boosting I'm assuming is much higher than the amount of account sharing and PvE boosting because in PvP, if you're doing 3v3 that player is a third of the group. But if you're doing a 20-man raid, they are, uh, what is that, 5% of the group. So it makes less of an impact, and that's why I'm assuming they probably don't want to talk uh, about that. It's because it's just so much closer tied to, uh, to account sharing. Uh, PvP is likely letting someone use the account. Yeah, yeah, basically. Why is it Blizzard ban RMT sellers if they compete with the WoW token? Uh, because Blizzard is incompetent and they can't even ban breast milk thieves. So um, uh, they needed to have California come in and do that for them. Uh, the company is completely mismanaged and it's run by clowns. Uh, basically, Blizzard, it's like Amazon. Uh, it's imagine there's a house that's on fire and the developers and the people that work there are monkeys. And the only thing that they have to put out the fire is gasoline. And that's pretty much what happens here. There you go. A boosting devalues the grind and prestige or put work for if little Timmy wimps out his mama's credit card. Exactly. And I guess I completely agree. I think that all RMT should be banned. Uh, RMT is bad. Someone to know I feel like devalues the rare amounts and PvP ranks and other items. Yeah, that's because it does devalue them. Exactly. A hundred percent been said already. I wouldn't buy boosting as much if it had its own section in Group Finder. Yeah, but why would you advertise in the boosting section of Group Finder? Uh, people, they're looking for new people to buy things. Uh, most of the time, people just buy ahead of the curve once, for example. Uh, they would be advertising everywhere they possibly can, even if it is TOS, because they don't care about the TOS. That's why they're RMTing in the first place. I was boosting Challenge Mode Golds and WAD. Uh, I bought the boost for the raid. It's fine. And that's what people do, right? Is that, um, you know, I, I made the joke for uh, uh, for Burning Crusade. Is that um, buy Burning Crusade, buy a 58 boost, buy gold on Retail WoW, and then trade the gold for TBC gold on your server. Then use the TBC gold to buy runs through slave pens to get to level 70. And then after you're at level 70, uh, then buy uh, your gear off of the auction house so you can uh, get invited into a GDKP raid. And then once you're inside of the GDKP raid with the gold that you, uh, sorry, the items that you bought with gold, uh, then now you're able to buy items in the GDKP raid and obtain your best in slot. Uh, after you obtain your best in slot and uh, you've done all of that, then you want to buy your arena carries as well. And after you do everything else and you get your arena carries and your arena cap and your uh, your gear into GDKP, uh, <laughs> you can finally play the game. So yeah, I understand. I understand quite well.